Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing one of my favorite videos to film every single year and that is the mid-year freakout book tag. We are halfway through the year, I personally cannot believe it. And this tag is essentially designed to highlight some of my favorite books I've already read, some books I hope to get to, some surprises, favorite characters, and all of that. It's super fun. I personally love watching it myself. I will of course have the original creators linked down below, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first question is quite a doozy and that is your favorite book you've read so far this year. Naturally I could not narrow it down to one specific title so I have two to talk about today and the first one is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I read this earlier this year. I loved it so much. I feel like it lives within my soul for the rest of time. I've also made Clay read this book. He also loved it. It's just so, so excellent. This is a multi-perspective historical fiction story documenting four generations of one Korean family, starting initially with one of our main characters, Sunja, as she leaves Korea and moves to Japan. Subsequently, her life after this move, as well as her children and their children's life as well, as well as a slew of other characters that come in and out of this family's life. This book is just stunning. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's a story of love, sacrifice, family, just trying to survive. Again, because this has so many different perspectives, you're really touched by almost every member of this family and you can kind of see their struggle through generations and through time. I would highly recommend this book. I also feel like it touches on an area of history that I personally did not know much about going into this story. And I also feel like this is a book I want to visit time and time again. Definitely a profoundly moving story, a painful book at times, but one that is just so stunning and I could not recommend this book more. And the other favorite book I've read so far this year is another one that will definitely stay with you for a long time and that is Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. This book is moving for so many different reasons. One, it's almost disturbing because this is a kind of futuristic post-apocalyptic story that feels so possible. It reflects society that is so similar to our own, especially if we continue to leave many of our societal issues to fester. This book was written in the 90s, but honestly, as you begin to read the story, it almost feels like Octavia E. Butler could see the future. So much of this just feels eerie. Um, but to give you some context of what the story is actually about, this essentially is set after a global climate and economic crisis, which led to social chaos in the early 2020s. This book specifically is set in California and with pervasive water shortages, as well as masses of vagabonds roaming the city, basically fighting to survive to see another day. We follow our main character, Lauren, who lives in a gated community with her family and her neighbors. Her father is actually a pastor within this community, and they are very isolated from the anarchy outside. They all work together to survive, grow food, and try to keep day-to-day -day life as normal as possible. In this world, any vulnerability is seen as a risk, and our main character, Lauren, suffers from hyper-empathy, which is a dilapidating sensitivity to other people's emotions. As the dangers of the outside world continues to escalate, Lauren tries to make her voice heard within the community, warning the people around them that they must prepare for a changing future, which the community stubbornly ignores. However, when everything comes crashing down around them, Lauren then goes on a journey to basically try to find a new safe place for herself. What begins as a fight for survival slowly begins to turn into something more, including the birth of a new faith that Lauren herself is kind of exploring through all of her writings. This book is absolutely incredible. Again, as I've already mentioned, how it reflects our current society, but also just following Lauren on this journey and how it's structurally written is really interesting as well. It's kind of like diary entries as Lauren reflects on her life and the journey as she encounters it. And also as she explores a new faith and religion that she's kind of developing that sort of reflects this new world and reality that she lives in. This book is haunting, it's beautiful, it's terrifying, and you will not be able to put it down. At the same time, through all of the death and destruction that you face with Lauren, there's also this seed of hope that she's constantly trying to sow throughout the story and it's just stunning. I personally can't wait to read the second book hopefully before the end of this year but this first novel was definitely one of my favorite books I've read this year and also of all time. It was just so so good. Next question is the best sequel you've read this year and that for me is going to be The Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is the first book to the third trilogy of Robin Hobb's world, so I'm counting it as a sequel because it's technically like book seven in my mind. 
but oh my gosh this book was just so incredible within this series we're basically re-encountering Fitz and the Fool again kind of taking place after a large stretch of time after the end of the Farseer trilogy re-encountering Fitz after all of the trauma and events that happened in the Farseer trilogy was honestly just emotional this first book was paced so well and I feel like Robin Hobb always gives her characters time and space to explore and also react to their emotions in their own time. Nothing feels rushed. Everything is just heartbreaking in so many ways and you just want to love and care for all of the characters generally that you encounter within this series or you hate them to no end. But this is the first book again to a new trilogy following Fitz and the Fool as they go on a new quest and a lot of the political and magical components that were present in the Farseer trilogy are continuing to be an issue within this world. If anything they have gotten worse. I loved this first book so much and I feel like the second and third book are only going to continue to destroy me, but this is definitely my favorite sequel so far this year, Robin Hobb Till I Die basically, forever fan. Next question is, what are some new releases that you haven't read yet but you really want to? I have two for this that just came out. The first is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid has written two other books I've personally really enjoyed, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo as well as Daisy Jones and the Six, and this is her new story set in California following a bunch of siblings who are like surfer famous and they essentially throw a party and their house burns down at the end. I believe this book is multi-perspective and takes place over the span of 24 hours. I'm really intrigued by this. I'm also going to Malibu later this year so I feel like I need to read this before I go myself so I can pretend to be a character within this dramatic story, you know? And then the other new release I really want to get to is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is a book I have been highly anticipating for a long time and it's said to basically be a fairy tale fantasy retelling of Beauty and the Beast as well as Red Riding Hood. It's also said to be pretty heavy on the romance which I generally enjoy in atmospheric fantasy stories like this. It basically says the first daughter is for the throne, the second daughter is for the wolf, and we essentially follow our main character who has lived her entire life knowing that she was going to be sacrificed to the dark wood but when she's finally there she realizes that the wolf is not a monster but a man and she must learn how to use her dark magic she has been hiding to save everyone. It sounds good. I hope it's angsty. I hope it has a lot of romance. I'm looking forward to reading this hopefully soon. Next is most anticipated releases for the second half of 2021. I have quite a few. There are so many books coming out this year. I think the first one has to be Lies of Locke Lamora book four. I still need to read the third book in this series, but I think with the fourth book coming out, that will spur me to read it a bit faster. But I love this heist thief-centered fantasy series. I also am really looking forward to She Who Became the Sun, which comes out so 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 soon which is a queer bold lyrical reimagining of the rise of the emperor in the Ming dynasty cannot wait and then the last one probably my most anticipated for the back half of this year is jade legacy the third book by fonda lee the first one being jade city which is an asian inspired urban fantasy story about like mafia families fighting each other and they can use jade to become more powerful it's so good full of family drama and angst and the second book just knocked my socks off so i can't wait to see how it ends in Jade Legacy. So that is definitely my most anticipated, I would say. Next question is, what has been your most disappointing read of the year so far? I have two for this. Both of them kind of fall under the same category as just being very overhyped and ultimately very underwhelming to me personally. The first one is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Imes. I feel like this book is so beloved and while it definitely has some components I think are really fun. I like the quest, guild, kind of seeking glory, defeating monsters, characters kind of past their prime, kind of getting the band back together. Some aspects of the story is a lot of fun but I felt like I never felt very connected to the overall characters, their arc, or even the story. It just felt very surface to me and overall found it to just be okay. It wasn't bad but it didn't blow my mind. Uh, kind of like how I was hoping it would. So I'd say this was definitely disappointing. And then the second book I have is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This is a new space opera release by this very famous author. I think this book just had pacing issues. It had a lot of unnecessary scenes. It was so long and by the time I got to the end I just could not wait for it to be over. I think this could be a lot better if it was cut down a bit and I also feel like some of the characters felt a little flat for me too in terms of overall development but these would be my two most disappointing reads of 2021 so far. Next question is biggest surprise and for that I'm going to go with A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. 
because this book <laughs> was surprising me left and right while I was reading it. The pacing and how the story unfolded was just an absolute wild time. Could not guess the beginning, middle, or end. I enjoyed every single second of this. It was just so good. So that's why I would say it was such a surprise. In this story, we follow our main character, Mahit, who has grown up on a very small and isolated space station. She has recently taken up a new position as an ambassador for her space station on this very powerful planet that is kind of a colonial power in the area, and she needs to protect the interests of her homeland. However, once she arrives, she quickly realizes that the political landscape is much more complicated than she was anticipating, as her predecessor has been killed, and no one will tell her if it was murdered. Murder. Now she's trying to stay alive, solve a murder, as well as prevent war from breaking out in the galaxy at large. This book is so wild. I think the whole thing takes place over the span of three days. I could not put it down. It's also incredibly original and just kind of encountering this new planet while well, seeing everything through Mahit's eyes was just delightful. I loved it. Hyper political. If you love hyper political stories, this is definitely one for you. The next question is favorite new author or new to you author. And I'm I'm gonna go with Josiah Bancroft. I started the Send Linda Send series earlier this year and I've since read two installments and I've quickly fallen in love with this fantasy world. I just think it's beautifully written, so imaginative, quirky and dark. And just based on his writing style and just everything about the story, I feel like I hopefully will love everything that Josiah Bancroft continues to put out. And I will definitely be looking forward to any book that he continues to write in the future. But Senlin Ascends is such a delight and weird story, basically following our main character Senlin as he tries to save his wife who has gotten lost in this big tower called the Tower of Babel. It's full of so many different floors with their own political interests, as well as each floor kind of has its own sinister quality to it. Senlin is so rootable, so are so many of the other characters in the story. I love it. I loved it so much. I love the writing in this and I just feel like I will continue to love Josiah Bancroft's writing. So I'm looking forward to finishing this later this year as well as just reading more books by this author. Next question is newest fictional crush. I wouldn't say it's so new but it's more like I've re-encountered my love for this character again and that is Kaladin Stormblast from the Stormlight Archives. I have been rereading the Stormlight Archives throughout this year and my love for Kaladin has only grown. I just love him. He's just so grumpy and sad. I just want to give him a hug. I love his chapters. I love him and his friends. And ultimately, I just want Kaladin to be happy. Um, but in general, too, I would say I have fallen in love with like every character within the Stormlight Archive. Katie Sanderson's world building and character work within the Stormlight Archives is just so good and it will break your heart. And there's just so many characters with complex backgrounds that you can't help but to root for. But I love Kaladin. I love him very, very much. And I would say he is my fictional crush of the year so far. Next question is favorite fictional characters. And I have two for this. And they are Mizaki from The Sword of Kaigen and Orca from The Shadow of the God. Both of these women in a nutshell are basically kick butt moms. And both of them have such a fascinating and just richly detailed character arc. I love both of these characters so much and I feel like both authors really did justice with following them on their individual journeys, writing them as incredible warriors you can't help but to fall in love with, but also really focusing on motherhood as a concept within fantasy, which I feel like is not often touched on, and both of these characters' journeys to try to save and protect their families at all costs. I love them. I love their individual journeys. I love their family journeys. I love these books. And I also just feel like I've really grown to love like really awesome moms within fantasy. I feel like Ship of Magic also did that really, really well. And I just, I'm here for it. And if you want some really kick butt moms, check out these two series because they deliver in that department. Oh boy, do they. Next question is name a book that made you cry. And I of course had to go with The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book, man, the tears that were shed while reading this, this was just a stunning story. And this is essentially a story documenting the life and love between Patroclus and Achilles, and just also an incredible reimagining and humanization of a well-known classic, the Iliad. Um, I feel like this book really combined beautiful, intimate, lyrical scenes of Patroclus and Achilles, following them as young boys into young men, and ultimately when they go off to war, with these incredible well-known scenes from the Iliad. The writing, the characterization, and just the emotion that is packed within the story, I cried. And I'm pretty sure everyone else who's read this book has cried too. So if you're looking for a good tearjerker, 
check out the song of Achilles. It's so, so beautiful. Patroclus, you deserve everything. <laughs> Next up is name a book that makes you happy. I have two books for this and they're both romances. The first is a YA contemporary romance and that is I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. This book is just so much fun, so adorable, so lighthearted, and just one that'll put a smile on your face, at least it did for me. It essentially follows her main character who has a lot of her life planned out. She's very smart, she's very determined, she has dreams, she has goals, but there's one area of her life she's kind of had trouble with, and that is getting a boyfriend. She decides to turn to K-dramas to create the perfect plan. Using K-dramas as a reference point, it's hilarious, it's fun. I loved it so much. The other book I would say that made me very happy this year is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is an adult romance and is very, very steamy, but it also just has all of my favorite tropes. This has friends to lovers as well as fake dating. There's so much humor, there's so much camaraderie, and it's just so sweet. Like you will fall in love with these two characters present in this story immediately and just their love for each other both in friendship and romantically and just the amount of pining present in the story just cannot say no. And this essentially follows our main character, Danny, who is seeking professional success and academic renown. And in general, she really doesn't feel like she has time for long-term dating. So she's looking for the perfect friends with benefits situation. Enter our other main character, who is a grumpy security guard on the campus she works at and a hilarious elevator accident that makes them both go viral recipe for a hilarious and adorable good time. Loved this book so, so much. Talia Hibbert is so good at writing romance as well. Definitely check out her other books she has out because they're all amazing. Next question is, what is one of the most beautiful books you have bought so far this year? I'm gonna go with The Witch's Heart. I love this illustrated cover. I love the vibe of it. This is sort of a Norse mythology, witch-based novel, historical fiction story. I also just really wanna pick up this book a lot. I feel like I would love it, but I feel like the overall cover really captures the essence from the synopsis at least. So I don't know, I just think it's beautiful. And it honestly caught my eye immediately and was a large reason why I initially looked into the book and then I was obviously very much sold by the synopsis. So good, so pretty, I must read this soon. And then the very last question of this tag is what are some books you hope to get to before the end of the year? I have three I'm going to quickly mention. The first is Any Book by Frederick Bachman. I feel like this author is so beloved. I've had him on many TBRs this year and I've just continually failed to read a book by him. I own many books by him and I just really wanna read at least one before the end of 2021. Maybe Bear Town, maybe Anxious People, I'm not sure yet, but he is definitely going to be read at some point. I also, of course, want to start The Wheel of Time after I finish my Stormlight Archive read. This is a priority. Um, I'm hoping to maybe read one or two books before the end of this year. But yeah, this is definitely something I wanna to get to. And then the last book I'm gonna mention is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is a recent pickup for me, but I feel like it's been just living in my brain. I just wanna read it so badly. I also really wanna check out the TV show. So this is another story I hope to read before the end of 2021. Alrighty guys, that is the mid-year freak out book tag. Let me know down below some favorite books you've read so far this year as I would love to know. And I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye.